the people come will come and go two new poets have joined nishan sala dharmoshena ji and sarita vatari ji vatari ji from nepal Na namaste namaste come will come sarita i think i know from nepal yes hmm Sharita Bhattari, yes. Bhattarari. Bhattarari, Bhattarari. Mm -hmm. We have Bhattacharji in Bangla. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the same names here and there. Yes. Sarita Bhattarari, yes. Yeah. Um, Nisanla. And uh, Balobirji's name reminds the very first <coughs> line of Kajino's rule Balobir Chiro Unno to Mamushir. Oh, oh, thank, you. <laughs> thank you. The most yeah. famous poem of Kajino's rule Islam. Yes, yes. Bidrohi, oh, yeah. the. Yes, I know the, that. The rebel, yes. Oh. <laughs> we think that is the best poem in, written so far in Bangla literature. Uh, namaste. Namaste. And, uh, Namaste. 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 Uh, we are about to begin the first session of the South Asian Online Literary Conference. And the session is meant for poetry recitations. Uh, and the distinguished poets we have with us in this session are actually uh, Arun Kamalji from India. Aishat Hussain Manikji from Maldives, Chador Wangmo from Bhutan, Albir Madhopuri from India, Ranjana Nirola from Nepal, Nisan Salah Dharmasen Bartholomews from uh, Sri Lanka, Kamrul Hassan from Bangladesh, Sarita Bhattariji from Nepal and Abhi, Professor Abhi Subedi ji from Nepal. Professor Abhi Subedi ji will chair this session. I'm happy to announce that uh, uh, respected Ajit Kaur ji is also with us on screen in this session. Namaste Ajit ji. And uh, with the approval of Ajit ji and the chair, Professor Abhi Subedi ji, I first invite uh, the distinguished poet in Hindi from India, Sri Arun Kamalji, to recite his poems. Thank you. Thank you, Sahitya Academy. And thank you, Ajit ji. Thank you, everybody. Namaskar or Adab. Hello, Arun ji. Namaskar. I am Arun Kamal from Bharat, that is India. I write in my mother language, Hindi. First, I will read out a short poem in the original Hindi, followed by its translation, and then all others in English only. The first poem. जैसे मैं बहुत सारी आवाजें नहीं सुन पा रहा हूं चींटियों के शक्कर तोड़ने की आवाज पंखुड़ी के एक-एक कर खुलने की आवाज गर्भ में जीवन बूंद गिरने की आवाज अपने ही शरीर में कोशिकाएं टूटने की आवाज इस तेज बहुत तेज चलती पृथ्वी के अंधड़ में जैसे मैं बहुत सारी आवाजें नहीं सुन रहा हूं वैसे ही तो होंगे वे लोग भी जो सुन नहीं पाते गोलियों की बौछार ताबड़तोड़ और पूछते हैं कहां है पृथ्वी पर चीख वाह 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 व्हाट अ पोएम नाउ द इंग्लिश रेंडरिंग जस्ट एज आई कैन नॉट हियर सो मेनी साउंड्स द साउंड ऑफ एन एन cracking a sugar granule, the sound of petals opening up one by one, the sound of life drop falling into the womb, 
the sound of the cells breaking down in my own body in the whirlwind of this vast and fast moving earth just as i am not hearing so many sounds and voices there must be others then who cannot hear the sound of incessant gun firing and ask where are shrieks on the earth wow wow now the second one and this i will be reading in english only okay <clears throat> the title of this I poem cannot. is simply because i love i cannot i know i will be killed unfortunately i couldn't uh, join with us i just uh, came to listen to all what is that <clears throat> today go ahead should i proceed hmm. i know minute. i will please uh, arun sir please you please continue i know i will be killed i know i will be killed if i open the door and call out your name i have to go out to see my ailing friend but i know i will be shot dead in the street hmm. i have to take my dying mother to hospital but i know not even the dying are spared hmm. not even the dead they are everywhere they are everywhere they are looking for me you hmm. and everybody i know that if we come together in the square we will be run over by their speeding vans but i have to go out mm. but i will have to go out it's night it's dark i must go out yes i know i will be a step to death in the alley but i have to go to popian for even if i stay in those shut with them safe i know they will come knock at the door and i will be killed in an encounter simply because i love you i will be lost simply because i love you i will be lynched simply because i love no ah. and now the third poem and it's open the door <coughs> open the door open all the gates don't ask who is there open the door open all the gates don't ask who is there it's you mm. it's me it's all just open the door let them all come in and crowd this a small room mm. and settle like dust mm. everywhere mm. so long as there's fire in the hearth Hmm. so long as there's rice in the bowl no. they all are welcome no. the earth is one the sky is one we all are one let them come and the door opens yeah. all the doors open no. yeah when and now this is the last one Mm-hmm. the fourth one and uh, the title is why are you silent mm-hmm. what is internal and what is private what is internal and what is private mm-hmm. when even the child in the womb is so exposed so open someone is beating up his wife relentlessly says it's my woman 
someone is crushing the small back of his boy servant with his boots says it's my boy and some dictator is killing thousands with his ten guns serious smiling it's my people what times are these when unbridled bulls are ransacking the cows mangers and no one speaks up what times are these when a white horse is spattered with blood runs a muck trampling the hamlets and no one dares to stop it why are the hamlets silent why are the cities silent why is the world silent hmm. why are you silent You Thank also. you. Uh, Thank you. Amazing poem. Good poetry, good poetry. Anandji, congratulations. Thank you, respected Arun Kamalji, for those beautiful poems. Uh, I request now Ms. Uh, Aishat Hussain Manikji. Hello. And a poet uh, from Maldives. Unfortunately, uh, her camera uh, hasn't been working, so we will only hear her. Mm. Ashad ji, can you yes, hear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I request uh, you. I just, uh, I just uh, end uh, my telephone, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, you can show my picture also my my phone, my mobile phone. But someone uh, uh, left me. Yeah. No, no, no problem at all. Uh, you are audible, so yeah. you please recite your poems. Yeah, my phone is better, I think, in this computer. Yeah, here you can see my. This. No, no, we can't see you, but you recite your poems. Go on reciting. Okay, sir. Someone is uh, some. Okay, okay, sir. <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I am very happy to join the South Asia Literature Festival. I write my mother language and translate my poem. I apologize, my picture is not seen in, in this session, uh, but uh, my phone I think is better. You can see my phone is me. Yeah? Recording in progress. Okay. okay. So, I, so I, I, I will give you my little bit uh, brief uh, biography. biography. My name is Aisha Tuhis and Manik. Uh, I am completed uh, higher, higher, higher study, uh, master degree at Maldives National University and Bachelor's of Arts in Dwey Language and additionally in this A diploma in course Arabic language, proficiency Japanese language, Chinese language, and Hindi language little bit, including reading and reading and writing. I, I do the Sharia and law also. I written published, I written books and uh, published the way language uh, poetry books and story books, uh, so many about eight books. I teach the language and has been given related translation to Maldives students. And I, I teach Colombo three in three years. Recently, I got the Rehendi Award, the National Rehendi Award held in this government, honored on 6th of September, 2021. I am a chairperson in Maldives Poetess Organization. And I worked before pre previous uh, work experience, including former parliament member before several years ago. So I am starting my poem, National Tree. This is uh, my, uh, my mother language uh, and I translated. Should it not be our pride in saying that the palm tree is the national tree? It is not known the benefits of this tree, Aunt Gobadi, Rava, Kuroli, 
Kashi, Dom Bonte, and Gaburi. Nice name. This is our language. Nice name for the Clement of the National Tree. The things that uh, falls from the palm tree, like uh, fluffy, fang, kashi, nashi, and uh, other things they can be used for various purposes. Also, nothing to the tree is waste. The wood of the palm tree is used to make boards. Palm tree can be used to make kurori. Mas kurori, this is for eating items, food items, and uh, gabri honey, bokeba. This is very special for the Maldives. Medicine also can be made for the many parts of the husk and young coconuts. From the roof of the houses, you can see that and rope are made from coconut husk on the occasional beaches. Can you name all these uses of tasty fruits? Yes. Is there any way else to get toddy used to make so much delicious sugar? Palm sap is used to make medicine. This is my poem translated in English. I, I just uh, gave to you in this session. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thanks a lot, uh, Aishafaji, for your poem. Uh, now, I humbly invite uh, Shadow Uvangmo, uh, eminent poet from Bhutan. Good afternoon, everybody. Yeah. It's so nice to see Maji out there. And nice to see everybody. Thank you so much. Nice to see you. Um, just a brief introduction. I am Chadrongmu, and I would dare to call myself a poet because I love writing poems. And with this now, I would like to read out two poems that I had uh, written quite a while ago. And the first one might seem a little bit depressing, it could be because of the times that we are going through just now. So please bear with me. So the first poem is titled, Winter. Through the frozen months of winter, like a seed buried under dark earth, no. layered in clothings through which somehow frigid cold wind sipped in. Mm. My frozen heart peeped out, shy and defeated, sometimes whispering to the bright moon, oh, singing dark songs of solitude, of longing to head out into summer's warm embrace. Wow. Summer came, promising sunshine galore. My heart, its layers of solitude, peeled off, dared to sprout out, raising itself heavenward, only to be pelted hard with heavy downpour, blinded by lightning, deafened by haughty thunders. My heart, sunk low, lower than winter's layered burial and waited for summer to pass. Wow. That was my first poem. Wonderful poem. Thank you so much, Abhiji. <laughs> Brilliant poem. So with this now, like I said, the first poem, maybe because of the pandemic that we have been living for almost two years now, it was a bit depressing but I didn't want to sound all depressing because I know the happiness that I derive just by seeing the faces that I am seeing on my screen just now. So the second poem, um, I think I would uh, uh, want to 
um, dedicate these poems to our friends from Afghanistan uh, of whatever mm. has recently happened there. Uh, I looked through the schedule and I saw that uh, Shams was supposed to be here. So I wanted to dedicate it to him. Uh, anyway, the poem is titled Just Bloom. Mm. This world may seem too bad or it may seem too good for you to dwell in. But there's no other place you can take root. Remember, this is the very place you smiled your first joy. Mm. And this is the first place you cried your first pain. Wow. And both your smile and tears have dropped down on the same earth. Wow. Where you stand with your uncertain breath. Whoa. Move a little further away from the marshy spot of delusion. Maybe while you're on the move, move away from the dry land of uncertainties. Add the ocean of all that has grown thorns and splinters Whoa. to puncture your secret hidden in the folded blankets of your tiny heart. Oh, then yeah. feel those tiny seeds of hope sprouting mm. from the tips of your toes and spread out like a full grown tree. Chin up, oh. face the sky where many answers lay buried. Oh. Allow your eyes to bloom the wildest and the most fragrant flower of life. Thank you. Wow, what a brilliant poem. Thank you, Abhiji. Yeah. So hope this rings yeah. in a little bit of positivity in it our friends who are going through Every. tough times. Every. Previous also sounds positive. Certainly. Thank you so much. So those were the two poems that I wanted to read for today. Yeah. Thank you so much Wonderful. for the opportunity. Wonderful. And Margie, it's so nice to see you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Shadowji. Uh, let us now invite uh, Sri Balbir Madhopuriji, one of the eminent poets from India. Balbirji, please unmute yourself first. Yes, you are listening? Yeah, yeah. You're audible now. Okay. Uh, dear friends, myself, uh, Balbir Madhupuri, and uh, I have authored uh, 14 books, translated uh, 46 books, and uh, edited 47 books in my mother tongue, Punjabi. Moreover, uh, currently, I am uh, uh, working as a director of Punjabi Pavan, New Delhi. And I would tell you that my autobiography, Shangya Rukh, The Pruned Tree, has been uh, translated by Oxford University Press. Uh, it is the third reprint uh, here uh, during this month. And uh, in so many Indian languages, and uh, uh, also published in uh, Russian, and uh, Polish language also. So uh, my recent uh, novel, Mitty Bolpei, The Earth Spoke, uh, has been uh, published uh, uh, last year and uh, in paperback, uh, it is available now uh, in uh, uh, everywhere in Punjab and Delhi also. So uh, my three books of poetry already published. I would recite uh, first uh, my two poems in Punjabi, my in my mother tongue, and then I would uh, uh, in English recite two poems. So, bear me, please. Mira Bazorg, my old man. Pani te pay leak noon. Ajebi patar te lakir samanga hai mira Bazorg. पानी ते पई लीक नु 
ਅਜੇ ਵੀ ਪੱਥਰ ਤੇ ਲਕੀਰ ਸਮਝਦਾ ਹੈ ਮੇਰਾ ਬਜ਼ੁਰਗ ਬੇਗਾਨੇ ਫੁੱਲ ਪੌਦਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਪਾਣੀ ਪਾਉਂਦਾ ਉਹ ਆਪ ਹੀ ਖਿੜ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਲਵੇਰਿਆਂ ਦੇ ਪਿੰਡਿਆਂ ਤੇ ਥਾਪੀ ਦਿੰਦਾ ਦੁੱਧ ਪੁੱਤ ਦੀ ਖੈਰ ਮੰਗਦਾ ਹੈ ਸਰਵੱਤ ਦਾ ਭਲਾ ਲੋਚਦਾ ਹੈ ਮਿੱਟੀ ਨਾਲ ਮਿੱਟੀ ਹੋ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਆਪਣੇ ਹੱਥੀਂ ਲਿਆਇਆ ਹੈ ਹਰਾ ਚਿੱਟਾ ਤੇ ਨੀਲਾ ਇਨਕਲਾਬ ਉਹ ਆਪਣੇ ਹੱਥੀਂ ਲਿਆਇਆ ਹੈ ਹਰਾ ਚਿੱਟਾ ਤੇ ਨੀਲਾ ਇਨਕਲਾਬ ਤੇ ਉਹਦੇ ਪਿੰਡੇ ਉੱਤੇ ਅਜੇ ਵੀ ਵਗਦਾ ਹੈ ਖੁਸ਼ਕ ਦਰਿਆ ਜੇਠ ਹਾੜ ਵਿੱਚ ਲੂਸ ਦੇ ਲਿਸੇ ਪਿੰਡੇ ਤੇ ਉਧਰ ਅੰਦਰੀ ਲਿਸ਼ਕਾਂ ਮਾਰਦੇ ਤਿਲਕਵੇਂ ਤਨ ਜਿਸਮਾਂ ਚੋਂ ਖੁਸ਼ੀ ਭਾਲਦੇ ਮਨ ਤੇ ਉਹਦੀ ਜੱਦੀ ਪੋਚ ਤੇ ਉਹਦੀ ਜੱਦੀ ਪੁਸ਼ਤੀ ਸੋਚ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਵਾਰ-ਵਾਰ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਹੈ ਮੁਖਾਤਬ ਇਹ ਤਾਂ ਮਹਿਜ ਨਸੀਬਾਂ ਦਾ ਖੇਲ ਹੈ ਕਦੇ-ਕਦੇ ਉਹ ਸੋਚਦਾ ਹੈ ਚਾਹੇ ਸਮੁੰਦਰ ਚ ਘੜਿਆਲ ਨੇ ਪਰ ਮੱਛੀਆਂ ਖੂਬ ਤੈਰਦੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਪਰੰਦਿਆਂ ਦੇ ਉਡਣ ਲਈ ਆਕਾਸ਼ ਰਹਿਣ ਲਈ ਘਰ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਮੇਰੇ ਕੋਲ ਕੀ ਹੈ ਗੌਰਵਮਈ ਸੰਸਕ੍ਰਿਤੀ ਦਾ ਦੇਸ਼ ਗੁਲਾਮੀ ਦੀ ਪ੍ਰਥਾ ਨੂੰ ਤੋੜਨ ਲਈ ਮੇਰੀ ਆਪਣੀ ਸੰਤਾਨ ਕਦੇ ਕਦੇ ਉਹ ਫਿਰ ਸੋਚਦਾ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਤਲਾਸ਼ਦਾ ਹੈ ਦੇਰ ਹੈ ਨੇਰ ਨਹੀਂ ਦੇ ਅਰਥ ਅਟਣਾ ਭਰੇ ਹੱਥਾਂ ਤੋਂ ਲੱਭਣ ਲੱਗਦਾ ਹੈ ਮਿੱਟ ਦੀਆਂ ਲੋਪ ਹੁੰਦੀਆਂ ਜਾ ਰਹੀਆਂ ਲਕੀਰਾਂ ਪਾਣੀ ਤੇ ਪਈ ਲੀਕ ਨੂੰ ਅਜੇ ਵੀ ਪੱਥਰ ਤੇ ਲਕੀਰ ਸਮਝਦਾ ਹੈ ਮੇਰਾ ਬਜ਼ੁਰਗ ਵਨ ਮੋਰ ਇਨ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਪਲੀਸ ਐਂਡ ਦੈਨ ਇਨ ਇੰਗਲਿਸ਼ ਕੱਖੋਂ ਹੌਲਾ ਆਦਮੀ ਮਤਲਬ ਲਿਟਲ ਸਟਰਾ ਟਾਈਪ ਮੈਨ ਕਈ ਵਾਰ ਸਿਡ ਕਈ ਵਾਰ ਸਿਰੋਂ ਵੱਡੇ ਰੁੱਖ ਵਾਂਗ ਹੋ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹਾਂ ਬੋਣਾ ਜਿਸ ਤੋਂ ਲੰਘਦੀ ਹੈ ਬਿਜਲੀ ਦੀ ਤਾਰ ਸ਼ਾਂਗਿਆ ਜਾਵਾਂ ਬੇਮੌਸਮਾ ਜਦੋਂ ਸੈਵਨ ਹੀ ਕੋਈ ਪੁੱਛ ਲੈਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਮੇਰਾ ਧਰਮ ਕਈ ਵਾਰ ਪਾਣੀਓਂ ਪਤਲਾ ਹੋ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਮਿੱਟੀ ਦਾ ਪੁਤਲਾ ਕਈ ਵਾਰ ਪਾਣੀਓਂ ਪਤਲਾ ਹੋ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਮਿੱਟੀ ਦਾ ਪੁਤਲਾ ਸ਼ਬਦ ਜ਼ਵਾਨ ਦਾ ਛੱਡ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਨੇ ਸਾਥ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਪੱਤ ਝੜ ਵਿੱਚ ਰੁੱਖਾਂ ਨਾਲੋਂ ਪੱਤੇ ਸਿਰੋਂ ਲੰਘ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਪਾਣੀ ਧਰਤੀ ਦਿੰਦੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਵੇਹਲ ਜਦੋਂ ਅਚਾਨਕ ਹੀ ਕੋਈ ਪੁੱਛ ਵੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਮੇਰੀ ਜਾਤ ਕਈ ਵਾਰ ਮਨ ਦੇ ਆਕਾਸ਼ ਉੱਤੇ ਚੜ ਆਉਂਦੇ ਨੇ ਉਦਾਸ ਕੋਰ ਉਦਾਸ ਕੋਰ ਉਦਾਸੀਆਂ ਦੇ ਬੱਦਲ ਜਦੋਂ ਮਹਾਨਗਰੀ ਹਵਾ ਵਿੱਚ ਪਰ ਸਮੇਟ ਕੇ ਬੈਠ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਉਡਾਰੀਆਂ ਭਰਦਾ ਕਲੋਲਾ ਕਰਦਾ ਚੋਗ ਚੋਗਣ ਆਇਆ ਪਰਿੰਦਾ ਪੁੱਛੇ ਜਦੋਂ ਕੋਈ ਚਾਹਣ ਚੱਕ ਉਹਦਾ ਜੱਦੀ ਪ੍ਰਦੇਸ਼ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਪਿੰਡ ਤੇ ਫਿਰ ਮੁਹੱਲਾ ਕਈ ਵਾਰ ਕੀ ਅਕਸਰ ਹੀ ਫੰਡਿਆ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਪਰਿੰਦਾ ਕਦੇ ਧਰਮ ਕਦੇ ਜਾਤ ਕਦੇ ਮੁਹੱਲੇ ਕਦੇ ਵਰਣ ਬਾਣ ਨਾਲ ਕਈ ਵਾਰ ਕੀ ਅਕਸਰ ਹੀ ਫੰਡਿਆ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਪਰਿੰਦਾ ਉੱਡਦਾ ਪਰਿੰਦਾ ਕਦੇ ਧਰਮ ਕਦੇ ਜਾਤ ਕਦੇ ਮੁਹੱਲੇ ਕਦੇ ਵਰਣ ਬਾਣ ਨਾਲ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਨਾਉ ਆਈ ਵੁੱਡ ਰਿਸਾਈਟ ਮਾਈ ਟੂ ਪੋਇਮਸ ਇਨ ਇੰਗਲਿਸ਼ ਐਂਡ ਥੀਸ ਪੋਇਮਸ ਐਂਡ ਥਿਸ ਬੁੱਕ ਇਜ਼ ਟ੍ਰਾਂਸਲੇਟਡ ਬਾਈ ਪ੍ਰੋਫੈਸਰ ਟੀ ਸੀ ਕਈ ਮਾਈ ਕਾਸਟ ਮਾਈ ਸ਼ੈਡੋ and uh, recently published it uh, he said he said for long i have followed in your port he said for long i have followed in your footsteps now you follow in mine they said we have the head they said we have the head and you have the feet the duty of the feet is to walk he said for long i have been your yes man for long 
I have your yes man. Now listen to me. They said, we have the tongue and you have the ears. Their duty is to listen. Mm. He said, I was made homeless by you. He said, I was made homeless by you. Now give me back my home. Mm-hmm. They said, Adivasi's home is in the jungle. Mm. We will spread the jungle air. It is, it's a sin to go against the wind. Mm. He said, I am a blinkered ox. He said, I am a blinkered ox. Allow my weary limbs to rest. Unblinkered my eyes. They said, your duty is not to see. They said, your duty is not to see, but to shut your eyes after seeing. He said, I shall move against the wind. He said, I shall move against the wind. They said, it is now impossible to stop the wind. They said, it is impossible to stop the wind. The next one is very small also. Uh, is life. Life, I wish to live with you. Life, I wish to live with you like a plant with mud, greenness with the leaf, and landscape with eyes. Life, I wish to be bonded with you, like the fish with the sea, warmth with the sun, fragrance with flowers. Life, I wish to live with you, like a plant with the mud, greenness with the leaf, the landscape with the eyes. Life, I wish to negotiate the ups and downs, like a boat on the waves, like a mountain herdsman going up and down the hills. Life, Every day, I wish to become a cloud over burning desert or cozy wings over chicks, shivering, dying with cold. Life, I wish to expand like one face of all the seven seas, like sunshine of all the seven colors and one green tree. Life, I wish to live with you like a plant with mud, greenness with the leaf, the landscape with eyes. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Well, thanks a lot, Balbirji. Next, we will invite uh, Ms. Ranjana Neurology. We have with us the poet from Nepal, Ranjanaji. Thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon, dear all. Greetings, dear ma. Namaste, Daju, Avidaju. I am Ranjana Nirola from Garfandu, Nepal. I am a freelancer, writer, and poet. Uh, thank you so much, ma. Thank you so much, Postal family, for giving me this golden opportunity. Um, uh, my this poem, uh, I wrote this poem from the perspective of a child who was crying with book during the war in Afghanistan. Uh, my uh, poem title is Appeal Behind from the Violence. Now I am going to recite my poem. Some land on the world map is yours. Some land on the, on the world map is yours, some land is mine too. 
This more tint culture is yours. Some culture color of culture is mine too. Mm. It is equal for all of us, the season, air, sun, and water on the earth. Then why do you repeatedly interfere with our right to live? Why do you do a journey of violence? Took on the neck of peace, blasting the bomb, shooting the gun to convert life into many pieces. Standing on the bloody land, my life is just like you. It has been decades, time is crying in pain. The beauty of life is burning by changing into ashes, blood, tears, and murder. In the same fire, the kids, youth, and old have all been destroyed. Mm. I am asking you, terrorism. I am asking you, terrorism. What is my right to be born and be of the soil? What is my crime? Why am I getting punished? Please tell me, Ariel. Please tell me, terrorism. Mm -hmm. My appeal to you from behind bomb, gun, and violence. My appeal to you from behind bomb, and bomb, gun, and violence. Please let me play with books. Let me go to school. Mm -hmm. Give me the world to live fearless life. I'm I wish war will. Mm -hmm. I wish war will turn into history. I wish to exchange a smile with peace. I wish to give freedom to my pleasure with pleasant life. Have here. Request from all the suffer. Request from all the suffer. Give up the. Give up the weapon and give me the pain. I can write peace. Give up violence and give me the books so that I can read brotherhood. Let us together hoist the flag of love and peace. I will rise the flag higher. Okay. In era has suffered you. In era has suffered you. How much should we bear now? My humble request to you from behind the violence. Strange. Please let me live a peaceful life. Look at my tiny hand. Please let, please let me live a peaceful life. Look at my tiny hand. This hand begins for peace with you. This hand begins for peace with you. Thank you. Ah, beautiful. Nice. Very moving. Nice poem. Thank you very much, Ranjanaji. Now we invite uh, the poet from Sri Lanka we have with us. Uh, Ms. Nisan Salah Dharmasena Bartholomews. Uh, hi, everyone. Hi, Bowan, uh, which means long live in Sri Lanka. I'm Nisan Salah Dharmasena Bartholomews. Uh, I started writing in 2004 in English language, and uh, around 260 poems were published in leading national papers in Sri Lanka. In year 2007, uh, one of the leading papers, uh, newspapers in Sri Lanka, the Daily News, uh, collected 88 uh, poets and published a book called The Color of My Dream. And after that, in year 2019, I published my first solo collection as uh, Fleeting Moments. And uh, the, this year, I'm uh, uh, publishing my second collection that's called My Womb. A barren land, so it is being uh, uh, being uh, ready. They are uh, like uh, in the last stages of the publication. So I will see it in the, at the end of this year. So the three poems uh, that I have selected are uh, the first one. I'm dedicating this for my family as well everyone who are dear to my heart. The heading of the poem is called Number Sixteen. Number 60. Yes, 16, one six. Mm. So, number 16 was a happy place, comparatively to others. Wooden covered walls with beautiful designing, yet darkness creeped in. Darkness always had a way of creeping in, so this time too, we left. Each took their own turn to visit each and every room, making a journey on their own, as if saying one final goodbye to all the memories once lived. Heart was breaking at leaving walls, walls vibrating with memories, each one lingering slowly and caressing nooks and corners 
of an empty grave. Shedding few silent tears, hidden from mothers, yet all had a face with red stained eyes and a brave smile, as if smiling to cheer on others. It was one of the hardest of goodbyes, leaving an empty house, which was once a beautiful home. The one who came last locked the gate, and she was carrying a pail turned to color green, as if too sad, as if too sad to leave behind even a single shade of memory. And that last one was me. So uh, the mm. second poem, I'm mm. dedicating this to all the people of my country, Sri Lanka. Mm. The heading of this poem is called Unmarked Graves in Unmarked Cemeteries. Mm. I'm the product of all my ancestors dying. Their death never making into legend. Unmarked graves in unmarked cemeteries. I'm the product of all my ancestors dying, their revolutions, written and unwritten. Words spoken and symbols crafted, cultures born and entire civilizations lost. I'm the product of all my ancestors dying, thousands of emotions born, felt, yet never shared. Like happiness slowly walking into loneliness, I'm the daughter of this mythical land. I'm the product of all my ancestors died. Mm -hmm. So last poem, I'm dedicating this to all people who lost their freedom of speech. So the heading of the poem is called, He Arrives Sharp at Nine. Sharp at nine, he arrives carrying a brown leather bag with crouching shoulders, like hunchback in Notre Dame. Everyone starts running around, trying to hide every word they could find, between pages of book and in every nook and corner. He sits and looks around, meditatively, arranging his fountain pen. In three colors, black, blue and red, arranging in that imperfect order, as if to find perfection in every corner. Black is to cut off, blue is to write newly, red is his all-time favorite, to kill a word with just one stroke, then to paste the white strips of paper on top of these red lines. Days on end, he keeps on going, devouring and feasting on bygone words. Words he erased from a world, a world which longed for freedom of words. Every day, at every day, sharp at nine, freedom of words is lost in vain. Yes, every day, sharp at nine, the censorship man arrives. Mm. So... That is the end of uh, my poems. Yes, Thank you so much for this opportunity given yes. to me. Thank Good you. Times. Good times. Thanks a lot, Ms. Ansalaji. Now we will move on and uh, humbly invite Sri Kamrul Hassanji, one of the eminent poets from Bangladesh. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Namaskar, everybody. I'm very happy to see Ojitji. Uh, over the years, uh, we have become a family and she's our mother. So happy to see the faces uh, online. Hopefully we shall meet uh, next year offline. I am from Bangladesh. Uh, I'm writing poetry for the last 40 years. And my first book of poems published uh, 30 years ago. How I old are you? Are you 50 years old? Uh, uh, more than that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 40 years. Yes, that's true. And I have 12 books of poems and two uh, anthologies. 
I have one book of short stories and two book of essays on poetry. Uh, in recent time, I'm writing travelogues. I have written five travelogues and writing uh, three more uh, parallelly. So I'm joining um, South Asian Festival for Literature for a long time and very happy to be a part of it. And I'm honored. My thanks to uh, Ojit Ji uh, for inviting me always. I'll read my first poem. It is based on an economic concept called opportunity cost. Minu could be my spouse or Chinu. Instead, Binu became my spouse. Caressing inside the tassel of Binu, I ponder how would be my life with Minu or Chinu, the moments of pleasure. I could live in New York or Montreal. Instead, I'm living in Dhaka. Walking inside the network of streets, I contemplate. How would be my life in those unknown cities? The war for pleasure. I could become a doctor or an engineer. Instead, I have chosen to become a poet. Indulging myself inside the sparkling gold of poetry, I muse. How would be my life in those professions? Will for earning. Now my life is passed in the complex calculations of opportunity costs. Inside sad cries like a strong laughter, the river of dancing waves. If I could come back to another life again, then I would live with Minu in Montreal as an engineer or an articulate doctor would roam in New York holding Chinu by her back. That's my first poem opportunity cost. My second one, actually translation kills the poem. In Bangla, I write in Bangla, so it is different sounding in Bangla. An essay on rice, second poem. After eating a plate of rice, the rice fragrance attracts me no more. I forget the intense desire to eat rice some moments ago. By forgetting that I ate rice the day before, I whispered to years, the rice plant is not so essential in the garden of purity. The rice pulled me powerful in yesterday inside the cave of burning hunger. Yesterday, I have absorbed mind's pain can articulate beautifully an essay on rice. By falling into a rice nap and aligning all husbands in rice tune, the ferocious gundas like Tatars roll down in the horizon from dawn to dusk. I know I have to eat rice even today, not only by habit. The celestial tailor stitches the greed of the stone age. I realize the value of rice only when I am hungry. My third one is on dinosaurs. The grain fields of the world roll inside its very, very tall neck. The flying carpet of Arabian, Arabia inside the open teeth and mouth, mouth, surrounding a shallow water body. Their wings fluttered in a heavenly sound, drawn in the horse hoof of Mikhail. These short hills have shattered the soil while walking on the road, on this road. The forest is shattered by the strike of concrete tail. Bars have flown away. The fishes are silent, diving deep into the bosom of the oceans. They spread their watery empires slowly and in fear. Even the clouds have flown higher. The wind is blowing, creating clefts. There is a solid, there is a cold sunshine inside. In the growing rays of ice age, they have disappeared into oblivion and inside the claws of nights. Still, dinosaurs raise and bring their deadly jaws. The grain fields of the world are inside their fathomless mouth. Still, on every piece of beauty and civilization, those giant fearful jaws are very much raised. Thank you very much for your attention.
Thanks a lot, Kamrul Sahib. Uh, now we will invite our second poet uh, from Nepal, uh, Sarita Bhattari. Sarita, Sarita ji, please unmute yourself first. Namaste and a very good afternoon to everyone. I'm Sarita Bhattrai. I'm an educator by profession and very passionate about working with young children. Um, but I love writing poetry about the ordinary and simple things around me. The first poem that I'm going to recite today is, and this is the first time I'm, I've been, I'm participating in this festival, so I'm very thankful for inviting me. And the uh, title of my poem is The K Valley. The K Valley stands for the Kathmandu Valley. Ancient, wrinkled, bejeweled lady, covered with a tattered red chowandi and snug fitting blue jeans, looks on. Her food pipe clogged with sewage and wind pipe choked with fumes, overburdened and congested with concrete. This biological and adoptive mother to innumerable selfish offspring groans with the overload alone. Tormented with agonized pain, she tremulously contemplates a glorious past and uncertain future. This is the first poem. The second poem is Ladybird Army. Like monsoon cloudbursts, ladybirds descended to overpower us. We were to evacuate and they would take over. Orange black dotted, minute winged creatures armed with their numbers. Cooking in the milk, riding on the dog, ladybird printed carpet, not an inch of empty space. Ladybird filled doors, walls, and closets. As I go about my chores, the scrunching sound underfoot becomes a regular rhythm, indicating ladybird decimation. My motion is their death trap, but their own motion or non-motion also becomes their death trap. This is my second poem. Um, and the third poem is entitled, The Red. Blazing red, fiery and furious red, dangerous, murderous red, the white, the black, the blue, awed with the red, question the camouflage. The green, orange, yellow, dread the red and seep into the canvas. The painter, confused, scared and bewildered, wields the paintbrush. Instead, finds himself painted in the dreaded red. The whole canvas splotched and ruined by the red. Mm -hmm. And the third one is entitled Silence. Daybreak silence, cool, vast, invigorating. Chirp, tweet, chirrup, twitter, foraging birds of calm. Silent morning sun, serene landscape transformed orange. Silence soaks the soul soundlessly. Beautiful. Silence. Yeah. Nice. nice. Noon silence, blazingly glorious, noiseless sun, rude horns, droning aircraft, punctuating the lazy, scorching quiet, restlessly agitated silence. Dusk silence, boisterously mm. calm, the muted setting sun, dusky tranquil night sky, homing birds, frolicking children, enhanced mix of noise and calm, human sounds, nature sounds, interspersed with soul silence. The silent night, mysteriously baffling, strangely quiet, like the starkly white full moon no. that penetrates 
Beautiful. The stillness softly penetrates the mind. Soul is overpowered. Silence sinister within and without. External sounds swallowed into infinity. The night silence lonely but painfully true. And the, the last poem is entitled Lockdown Verse. I've wanted to write a poem, a lengthy, drawn out lockdown verse. The singular image that emerges is the scattered midnight travelers on the highways. Children, babies, toddlers, packs of old and young, traversing the lengths of the roads in Sinduli and Banepa and Mugling and Chitwan. Foot walkers on the roads, toiling through the hot, dusty ways in flip-flops and shabby old footwear. Silent army trudging along the nights dark and still in clusters, escaping, fleeing from this deadly anxiety of hunger and starvation. Hold pockets, teary cheeks, only the resolve pushes them forward. Their feet, blistered, wounded, joining in a compulsive, futile marathon, plodding hundreds of miles to home, clutching their dreams in their hearts. An invisible virus and a government that is invisible. This unforgiving city could not accommodate them. Like a child clinging onto a starved mother's breast that can produce no milk, now they are compelled to return to the very place they escaped from. They're returning to homes and families with desolation. Tilaks and Suntalis and Bhimbadurs and Mayas and Nanis, walking and walking and endless walking, carrying toddlers and babies and bags on their backs and the burden of survival in their hearts. The pain deeper than the bottomless ocean, the stomachs so empty that the stomachs have forgotten a full belly. Chura Bhujia and Bhujia Chura, their fuel for the journey. The powerless looks in their eyes, no question of arrogance or haughtiness or self-pity, just a resigned acceptance. Deep blank stares, staring into nothing, hunger and helplessness and hopelessness. When will we reach Bardiyama? I'm tired and hungry. I want to sit down. I want to sleep on a bed. Can I ask for dal bath in that house we just crossed? Just a little, please, only this one time. I'm feeling hot, Amma. My feet are burning with the heat. Can't we ask the police uncle to give us a ride for just a little while? Why can't we go on a bus or even a tractor like we did last Thursday? What is Corona, Amma? That is the poem. Poem, Peter Sarita. Wonderful poems. Thank Very you. Thank thanks, you. thanks a lot, Sarita Ji. Now we come to the chair of this beautiful session, Professor Abhi Subedi Ji. I request him to sum up as well as recite some of his poems as well. Thank you. Today's reading um, is one of very powerful poems I recited. Diversity is one feature and a very moving picture of life and pain as well as joy, as well as fun. It's a very unique combination of moods and also methods. It is a really very powerful, diverse combination of poems, especially the depiction of the people's condition, the predicament of people that at the moment, the people are suffering. They came out in the poems and as well as the hopes and aspirations and the thwarted dreams of the people, the struggle they have been making, we have been making through the times. They came out very, very beautifully, powerfully in the poems. I don't want to go to each individual poems, but on the whole, this presented a whole picture of the times that we are living in. Both beauty and the pain of the beauty as well. Pain of the beauty that the different poet, poets address through different positions. And the very important feature of the poems recited in this reading 
was the kind of a very subtlety, the subtlety, the subtle um, irony, the subtle depiction of life and moments, the fragments of the moments, the very interesting moments of feelings and discoveries, very minuscule, small discoveries in these poems, minuscule discoveries and <clears throat> the projection of the experience of the poets is a very important factor in all the poems that were recited, the variety and the power. So it convinces us um, that um, poetry is still is presenting an energy to the to people where this hope is ebbing away. That's not very right. With Ajit Didi sitting here, I have been uh, I know her for the last quarter of a century, and how many different conditions of aspirations, inspirations in this part of the world we have addressed. She has addressed. Uh, there's a, it, it takes a whole, whole lot of a book to write about that. So coming to this year, 2021, some of the very senior poets and poets of the younger generation coming together and presenting these poems convinces me that the energy, the power of poetry and creation is kind of a, it is still in place. It is there. And there is a very hopeful sign that we have still been doing well, creating and moving forward. There is an amazing confidence and there is a great assurance. There's a great respect that we can give to Didi present here today. And very thank we are all thankful to the Academy also because you, your support is amazing and wonderful. I'll be writing sometimes about that. Um, so with these few words, I just would like to read not many, just a couple of poems that I have written um, all in the past, actually. The one that I'm going to read now is a memory of a person, recollection of um, the company that he gave us, amazing, very important part of the, the Foswal, um, a friend from Punjab, did it somehow a cousin, his name was called um, um, Manmohan Singh Mitwa. His name is Manmohan Singh Mitwa. Um, maybe Chador Wang Moji must have met him and others probably um, Balbir Madhavariji probably might have met him. He was an amazing person, a great energy of Foswal. Um, we met at every uh, SARC session, SARC meeting, SARC conference, but he passed away some years ago suddenly. And then, but this poem I had written before he died. And one day, at the Foswal, one of the meetings, poetry reading, he suddenly came out in Nepali dress. And he was wearing donning Nepali cap, ne Nepali jacket and Nepali dress. Suddenly, I don't know why he did that. The one reason later on, he told me that I did this out of love for you. He was such a great friend. And he called himself Liladhar Nepali <laughs> because that's the name he chose for the occasion. And I wrote this poem at that time. And I'm very glad to remember that I read it to him, this poem. So I just want to read that out. He emerged from the jungle of eyes, dwindling forests under myriad stars. He walked down the easel between people, growing with the quietness of primroses between stones. His stillness overwhelms me. On his body stage, he acts out drama of my nation that overwhelms me. All of a sudden, a snow-like cascade stands in Nepali, a cap from a city, ends in Bhadgaon, where pagodas wake up each morning, splitting light in five layers. Liladhar Nepali carries one layer of his sky, his cap, just above where light flows in white lines. 
Down the hill runs Leeladhar's perennial songs down a Sufi valley where nothing and everything is dusk. Leeladhar Nepali's serenity jerks with tremulous light. I made him in a photo in a broadsheet paper where in caption he sat with my name, snug, unquestioning, as if name is. One newspaper published uh, news about the press conference that we had organized, as Didi had organized. And then he, had, he was participating in that news conference, but the newspaper wrote the caption. At the bottom, the caption says, Professor Avishwedi participating in the conference, but it was his photo, but the caption went by my name. That's what I'm recalling. In a broad sheet paper, wherein caption, he sat with my name, snug, unquestioning, as if name is mere fleeting shadow dancing on solid rock. Hello. I have seen Leeladhar Nepali transcending borders and forging a strong bond between here and there, from here to eternity. When I sign up, mouths open wide. When Leeladhar Nepali, a Jain Mason, breaks the solidity last of meaning rock, turning them into what you and I have long awaited a flow of serendipity. That is what he was. I just read out one more short poem from my uh, collection, a dramatic poem, Chasing Dreams, which was sometimes staged under the direction of Professor Arun Gurto, whom I am meeting on one of these days for discussion. The land Translucent, you have hung on the eyelashes many times. You have slipped like moon into the room, burning without flames and smoke. With you, I always feel I'm not yet born. In your luminosity, I feel I haven't seen the light. I am broken like feelings over your heights and dunes. You have raised like dreams in every sky, suspended between my pain and pain and paper. You have roared like the unspoken words, the language we have longed to utter. You were a silence. Before I came, that's why you are so loud when I'm here. You have no boundaries. That is why I see them so clearly when I'm away from you. I don't remember when I became silent like the Himalayan snow, quiet like the pain of the couples, sowing the seeds in the unstable soil loud like the monsoon roars. I have become you. You are full of trails that climb up my dreams everywhere. You are a luminous corner, a hazy time, a sigh and a never-ending path that each of us walks like clouds in moments of love and pain. Thank you very much. That's my all my poems. Thanks a lot, Professor Subhadiji. Well, the wonderful session ends here. I heartily thank all the dear poets, respected chair and uh, respected Ajit Ma also, for she has been with us all through. Uh, our next session, we will right, uh, meet at uh, 10 past two, and the session will include a panel discussion on 
unfinished autobiography by Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, Revisiting History. Please look forward. Thanks a lot, all of you again. Mm -hmm.